an AP macro FRQ. Assume that the economy is operating below full employment level of output. This means a recession. And that the government's budget is balanced. Use a correctly labeled aggregate demand aggregate supply graph. Show how an increase in government spending will affect each of the following in the short run. So we're simply going to show us in a recession. We can do that. Price level, real GDP. Here we were originally at full employment. Now we're in a recession. We can see that the price level has gone down. We can see that real GDP has decreased. Um, and then there's some government spending. We know out of C plus I plus G plus XN, government spending, if government spending goes up, aggregate demand has to go up. So with that new government spending, we're going to get this increase in aggregate demand. Government's trying to push us back to full employment. So we can know in this situation, once the government starts spending, the prices will go back up. Real GDP will go back toward full employment. So we would say real output would increase. Price level is also going to increase. Explain how this increase in government spending will affect the following in the short run, the real interest rates and the investment. So this is really talking about loanable funds. We have our supply of loanable funds, our demand for loanable funds, real interest rate on the vertical, quantity of loanable funds on the horizontal. Understand that this is the crowding out effect. When government spends, we should just know here, when government spending goes up, it always is going to drive real interest rate higher. The reason for this is when the government is spending, especially when they have a balanced budget, a balanced budget is where government spending equals tax revenue. The government is just taking in enough tax revenue to cover its spending. So when it starts spending even more to get us out of this recession, it's got to get it from somewhere. It's got to borrow it. So the government is going to borrow this money from the banks. And we could go into, obviously, that they're selling bonds and their money's coming out of the banks when people buy the government's bonds. But we don't want to do that. Just think of it as the loanable funds graph is really just thought of as money in the banks. So when the government comes in and borrows, it's taking money out of the bank. Our supply of loanable fund is going to decrease and it's going to drive up the real interest rate. So our interest rate is going to go up. They're not so worried about the quantity of loanable funds. Obviously, we're taking it out. It's going to decrease. They're interested in what's going on with the real interest rate. Real interest rates will increase, and this is the crowding out effect, right? So obviously, if the government is coming in and borrowing, and they're driving out, uh, or they're taking out loanable funds and driving up the real interest rate, what we say is private investors can't get good cheap loans. So if private investors can't get good cheap loans, they're crowded out of the loanable funds market. So investment here is going to go down. When real interest rates go up, investment obviously always goes down. Now assume instead of government increasing government spending, the government decides to decrease corporate profit taxes. Using a new, I guess, correctly labeled aggregate demand aggregate supply, showing and explaining how this decrease in corporate taxes, profits taxes, will affect the following. Well, let's draw a new graph here. This is our price level, real GDP. And I'm assuming we're starting right back into a recession. Um, when the government decides to decrease corporate profit taxes, this implies that corporations are going to have more money. They're not being taxed as heavily on their profits, so therefore they're going to have more money to invest and more money to spend. So out of the C plus I plus G plus XN, now you're getting the C and the I going up, which is obviously going to increase aggregate demand. Investment and consumption is going to go up. Therefore, aggregate demand is going to increase. Um, at the same time, could we assume that some of this investment is going to be in capital formation? If some of the capital formation occurs, 
we understand that our long run aggregate supply curve would shift to the right. It will increase or shift rightward. We can show that and every so often they ask us to show it. And we just show that long run aggregate supply curve shifting to the right like that. Uh, still price level in real GDP. Um, real output. Obviously when there is corporate profit taxes decrease, there's going to be more spending. We said more consumption. That's going to affect aggregate demand. Um, there would be more investing, right? Meaning there's going to be more some consumption. But also let's not forget that uh, corporate profit taxes on businesses going down, this lowers the costs to businesses. If costs to businesses go down, we know this affects your short run aggregate supply curve. So that's going to sh shift rightward as your aggregate demand curve is shifting rightward also. What we tend to understand that no matter whether short run aggregate supply curve shifts to the right or aggregate demand shifts to the right, we're still going to get an increase in real output. So this would be an increase. The tricky thing here is we know we've got our long run aggregate supply curve shifting right here. Um, we also have aggregate demand shifting to the right like this. So we know in that, because of that, the price level is going up. But then we also have our short run aggregate supply curve shifting to the right. This implies that the price level, this caused the price level to go down. We really don't know. We would say we, it's, there's um, indeterminate. We can't know because corporate profit taxes affect cost of businesses, which affects your short run aggregate supply curve. If costs go down, your short run aggregate supply curve shifts to the right, lowering the price level. But then also there's more consumption by businesses because they have more money. So we could assume that's going to make aggregate demand go up, which makes the price level go up. When we've got one going up and one going down, we're just going to call this indeterminate. All right. And D, I'm going to get rid of this. That was sloppily done, as they all are, but I only have so much space. Um, 4D, it says, assume that the country produces two goods, X and Y. Draw a correctly labeled production possibility curve for this economy. How this decrease in corporate profit taxes will affect this economy's production possibility curve. You have to recognize that your PPC is your long-run aggregate supply curve. They are really the same thing. We talk about them as they are very, if not immediately, closely related. If your long run aggregate supply curve shifts to the right, your PPC has to shift out. So we would say uh, two goods, let's do X and Y to be exact. Show on your graph the decrease, yep, just a shifting out or shifting right of your long run aggregate supply curve. All right, guys, that was quickly done, but I uh, hope it helped. Um, be safe, take care.